Hi, and welcome to the second part of our virtual um, open house for Auburn Geosciences for prospective graduate students. My name is Ann Ojeda, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Geosciences here at Auburn. And the next few minutes, you'll learn a little bit more about the department, some of the research areas, and meet some faculty members. Then we'll have several faculty members showcase their work and explain how prospective students can get involved. First, I wanna welcome you to the Department of Geosciences here at Auburn. Auburn is located in Alabama, and we are about two hours from Atlanta and about three hours from the Gulf Coast. So we're ideally located in a nice warm climate. And um, here are the two main buildings that the Department of Geosciences um, houses. We are in the Haley Center. Geography is located in the Haley Center. And um, geology is located in Beard Eves Moyer Coliseum. These are the major research areas of our faculty here at Auburn. Um, we have faculty that participate in both lab-based and field-based research in solid earth processes and dynamics, environmental geosciences, geospatial sciences, natural resources exploration, and earth and life through time. And you can see through the snapshots that I've um, put on the slide, we have a wide range of research and we participate regularly in the Imperial Barrel Award program. The best way for you to get an idea of our faculty research is to hear from the faculty themselves. So with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Mitra. Thank you, Dr. Ojeda. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, or maybe a good morning or good evening from whichever part of the world you're listening from. I am Chandana Mitra, an associate professor in Department of Geosciences. My research is focused mostly on urban areas, how they grow, past, present, and future. The impacts of urban areas on microclimate, which means urban heat, urban precipitation, and urban aerosol impacts. Another aspect of my research is sustainability, which includes urban resiliency, blue-green infrastructure, storm water management, solar power capacity, an example of which you can see in the bottom left side of the slide. It is a map showing solar radiation capacity or solar power potential of Auburn University rooftops created by using satellite images. Now talking about the available and potential funding opportunities for research. First one is a NASA interdisciplinary project which will involve geospatial and computational techniques to assess the impact of urban heat, evapotranspiration on urban rainfall, uh, mostly in connected urban agglomerations. This position may open up from fall 2021 for a PhD student. The other opportunity is for masters and PhD students. This is for the NSF NRT or National Research and Training Program. You will hear more about it from Dr. McNeil. But if anyone is interested to work on urban climate, heat and health, urban floods, mesoscale climate modeling, please contact me. You have to be a US citizen to apply for this position. The last one I want to speak about is a potential master student position. It is for a NASA project, which I have applied for. I'm waiting to hear back from them on the funding. This one is on understanding how urban heat and urban pollution islands affect human health. The research which involves geospatial techniques and machine learning. Now that is all which I have for today. Any questions, please email me. And thank you very much for listening. Dr. Ojeda. Thank you, Dr. Mitra. The next faculty member that we will hear from is Dr. Billinger. Hi, uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us. My name is Laura Belanker, and I'm an assistant professor here at Auburn, and I run the Economic Geology and Geochemistry group. My students and I use both field and lab-based approaches to study how metals move and become concentrated within Earth's crust. Particularly, I'm interested in using non-traditional geochemistry, like metal stable isotopes, to illuminate non-traditional ideas for how metal deposits form. I am looking for a new student to start in fall of 2021, and I have two available projects. The first would utilize geological mapping, petrography, and geochemistry to investigate iron deposits in Puerto Rico. 
You can see an example of one of those deposits here in a photo that was taken by our collaborator, Tom Hudgens, and his students at the University of Puerto Rico. Part of this project would also involve building a collaborative learning and research partnership with our colleagues in Puerto Rico. On the lab-based side of my research, I run a facility where we can perform high temperature experiments to understand the geochemical processes that occur in magmas um, or on the areas on their periphery. Essentially, we make magma in the lab. This project would involve performing high temperature experimentation to develop a framework within which we can better interpret metal stable isotope data from natural samples. In photo two at the bottom right hand corner, you can see solidified lab magma in a gold capsule that was held at 800 degrees Celsius for several weeks. Metal stable isotopes like iron, copper, molybdenum have become really popular as a tool in studying high temperature and ore forming systems, but we have to make several assumptions when we consider measurements of the rocks that we collect. So we need these experiments to take away a lot of our guesswork and make more robust interpretations. If any of this interests you, please reach out to me over email um, and send along your CV. Thanks, Dr. Ojeda. Thank you, Dr. Billinger. Next, we'll hear from Dr. Karen McNeil, and she'll talk about the Auburn NRT Climate Resilience Program. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thanks for coming. Um, as mentioned by Dr. Mitra earlier, um, we have a um, special pro program funded from the National Science Foundation Program, which is a research traineeship in climate resilience. And our goal is to train the next generation of interdisciplinary scientists in climate-related hazard science as it relates to human natural systems. And earlier, you saw the triangle to the right. If we could go back really quick. <laughs> Um, that discuss the social system, the built environment, and the natural system. And so projects that address any of these um, areas within climate resilience uh, match our goals for the, um, the program. And our major question is how can resilience to natural hazards and disasters be achieved in the Southeast US under the dynamic com com conditions of climate change especially within these um, areas within the blue tri uh, triangle. And then we have a number of programmatic activities, which is the outer circle that um, graduate trainees participate in as part of the project. Um, go ahead to the next slide, please. And so ultimately we want our trainees to be able to analyze the impacts of climate change, to demonstrate the ability to, to address climate related hazards in the Southeast, have proficient skills in communicating, recognize the interdisciplinary ch challenges, and also recognize non-academic research um, and career um, applications, um, because we want um, those that we are training to go out into the variety of sectors that have to um, address this challenge of climate change and how to become resilient to it. And there are many, many areas that need um, trained experts in this, in this area, but all of these things, in com including communication, is a strong part of what uh, we emphasize in this program. And we've already had our first cohort of trainees um, so far successfully in their first half. You see them in the right-hand corner. Um, and of course, this year uh, we've uh, had a lot of Zoom interfaces, but hopefully that will change soon. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please. And so as mentioned earlier, um, if you want to have a funded, um, if you want to be a funded trainee, you need to be a U.S. citizen. The trainee stipend is quite large at $34,000 up for up to two years renewable, so $34,000 each year. Um, and also out-of-state tuition fellowship and in-state tuition waived uh, or paid for. Um, and so there's also a little bit of fees that the program is able to pay for funded trainees. But again, you must be a US citizen for that aspect. However, we do have unfunded trainee positions. Um, and if you're in this um, uh, category in the program, you are still recognized as a trainee by the NSF. You have to complete the same program expectations. And um, that doesn't mean you wouldn't receive any funding. You would likely receive departmental support to be part of this program, and then later perhaps um, apply for a funded slot within the NRT um, or remain an unfunded trainee, depending upon your particular situation. Um, 
So ultimately this program um, allows for people who are interested in receiving funding, um, not maybe not interested in receiving funding, but still wanna participate as a trainee, or if you neither of these things are attractive to you or quite maybe don't fit the research area that you're interested in, there are very many opportunities to participate in aspects of the program, coursework, workshops, and other things that are offered um, to anyone, not just a trainee. So we hope that you consider um, applying for this. Uh, we're, we have uh, applications open until January 4th. Um, you can go to our website um, or Google Climate Resilience at Auburn and you should find our website um, anyhow, thank you so much for your interest and we hope to see your application. Thank you, Dr. Neal, and thank you to all the faculty that were um, speaking today. And if you have any questions um, or if you're interested in working with a faculty member um, that presented today or that hasn't presented, I encourage you to email that faculty directly and explain your interest in their research and your interest in Auburn. We also have a series of faculty spotlights um, that are short three minute videos that describe faculty research that are on our YouTube channel. So be sure to check those out. Thanks for watching and be sure to attend other parts of the open house as well.